I also just wanted to touch on something that was touched on earlier was collaboration with fintechs and specialist technology firms, how they have become an integral part of uh, the kind of setup of larger institutions. How, how, Yingyi, how important for Standard Chartered are those uh, relationships and uh, yeah, what value do they bring to the, to the institution? Well, uh, the whole setup for fintech in the initial years is really to disrupt the industry, right? So therefore, they are really much more agile. Their thinking process is very different. The implementation process is also very different uh, from the traditional banking. So I think it got to the point where we realized that there's coexistence. We can live as a happy family. We can leverage on each other to get to a certain point. So in recent months itself, you'll see a greater extent of collaborations with all these fintechs uh, or tech partners itself whether it's in the area of servicing, whether it's in the area of cloud computing, or even uh, aligning your workflow itself. And actually, we do need that because um, they are, for example, right, Snowflake, they're, for example, Sapphire and all these uh, systems, or even Symphony, right? Uh, you can use them to actually communicate with your client, shorten your latency, or even dehumanize it, as what you put it. Or you can even use it to create a three-party to show information to your clients' clients and use as a standalone uh, to get to that stage is will be very slow because you will also need to prioritize against your regulatory, against your other items, right? So if you have a party that, out there who is also thinking a little bit out of the box for you and you can actually attach them to your current infrastructure, why not? It's a win-win proposition. Mm. So I actually do welcome fintechs and all these uh, tech partners to get us to that phase. But I think more importantly is you need to know what is your ecosystem and what gaps do you have in your ecosystem and then you select the right partner to work with to get you to that stage. And that I think is the ultimate key to how do you define success, who you want to work with and how do you redefine the ecosystems for us and for our clients. Okay. Yannick, how? Yeah, I, I think you mentioned something about the win-win and I think this is, a, this is a trend, a recent trend. Uh, I think the perception around fintech has moved from uh, a, a risk of being disrupted yeah. by those uh, uh, emerging uh, company, very agile, um, very clever, uh, smart people uh, on the edge of uh, every single uh, technology, to a situation where I believe now uh, we, have a, we have a mutual interest to collaborate uh, with them. In our organization, traditionally in the IT, um, we wanted to have hands-on and control of every single process application that we were developing. Um, but now with the pace of innovation uh, and the pace of uh, technology evolution, it's no longer a model that we can sustain. We, we, yeah. we, we do not have the human capability to adapt to each of these technologies. So collaboration is something that I believe is, is uh, mutual. So on one side, I think the, the, the fintech most of the time are really um, uh, true expertise in a niche uh, area, but they are very, very strong in it. And we can benefit on, on that. And on the other side, they can already uh, benefit from our client reach and our market reach, right? And this is what they are missing, basically, to, to scale, right? So I think that from the risk of being disrupted to really seeing a win-win opportunity, I think this is really a mindset that has changed over the last uh, few years from my perspective. Perfect. And looking at the industry as a whole, Richard, maybe, <coughs> maybe we can come to you on this. What areas are really lagging in terms of technological development? Where are clients most kind of um, not happy with their service and where it could be improved? To be honest, from the, from the surveys, it's usually things like response to queries. Mm. It's basic stuff. Yeah. I, I want, you know, I have to, two things actually, response to queries and staff turnover. People like to get used to dealing with the same. Continuity. Yeah, yeah with, to continuity, exactly. Nothing new. The cli clients, from what we can see, are not clamoring for their providers to adopt all these new technologies. Yes, they want to benefit from them. Yes. But it's basic, yeah. sort of almost housekeeping. Yeah. You know, make sure your queries are answered in a certain space of time and that they can get to know somebody that they can call. Yeah. I'll address that in two parts. If okay. you can dehumanize it and actually give instantaneous uh, statuses, right? 
then only for escalations they still call their names, those names. So it becomes a win-win, right? Mm -hmm. So I may I can optimize for workforce to still be there, but at the same time I give clients the information they need as and when they need it, and they can also go home early because they're done with the day processing, right? So it's a win-win. But I don't think we've gotten to the stage yet, but hopefully that day will come sooner rather than later. Yes, I would agree with that. I think the dividing line between those two areas isn't quite clear yeah. yet. Um, so, and we feel it in our personal lives as well. Self-service is great, but it's sometimes a bit irritating, you know, and, and you want someone to do it for you. But I don't think either the clients or the providers really know exactly how to optimize that division. Yeah. As a market infrastructure, where, where do you see technology can most benefit you moving forward? Um, there are some areas, for example, we were discussing uh, asset servicing specificities. There is one area uh, which is extremely uh, uh, people intensive is the, the, the overall tax services area. Uh, I mean, historically, so first of all, this is a, a fragmented market. There is not one single uh, uh, tax uh, uh, processing that is harmonized across the, you mentioned, 40 markets. We are more or less in the same situation. And this is also uh, an area where you need to provide an evidence uh, tax status through a bunch of documentation. And uh, even if we have many technology that enable that, we are still uh, lacking uh, uh, our true capacity to process efficiently this uh, huge documentation request. And still believe that, because we still have, so yes, we can uh, read PDF, we have OCR systems, uh, digital recognition, etc. but we have still physical paper, right? And by nature, a physical paper remains inefficient, right? And we have not yet found a way to move from physical uh, client documentations to completely um, uh, digital uh, process. We are, I would say, it's a paradox, we are even more advanced in the digitization of securities, for example, where we can replace now a piece of paper by a piece of code, right, with a mm -hmm. native digital instrument uh, represented by this piece of code. The client documentation, we are not yet there, right, and it's still an area that consumes lots of efforts, lot of effort, lot of IT investment, but still I believe we are not yet there. Perfect. And on that note, I just want to ask a final question for all, all the participants. What one development in technology do you think will have the greatest impact on the security services industry over the next five years? Yannick, maybe we can start with you. Yes. So I think that um, well, you never know in, uh, in technology, but I, I don't think that I think that some of the trend that we have seen, at least from our perspective, around uh, cloud migration, uh, DLT and, and data will continue to occupy and focus our and prioritize our investment in the next uh, in the next three years. I think that now the, the potential of, of DLT um, is uh, is uh, better understood. Uh, we've made mistake internally, but we have continued with our uh, uh, D7 platform uh, to uh, to that journey. Uh, we have also. Uh, moved almost all our development, testing, and acceptance environment to the cloud, and we are starting now to move uh, the uh, the, uh, the production workload to to the cloud. And I think that again on the data, if we manage to move uh, from the uh, the perception where we provide uh, uh, historic reporting and uh, backward looking type of data into uh, forward looking data, predictive reporting, I believe this is really where we will create for for clients. Uh, we, we have all heard about the, um, the, uh, the settlement discipline regime, right, where now clients get uh, fined if they fail their settlement. So if you can provide settlement, predictive settlements to give insight, actionable insight to clients to focus on those transactions that risk of failing based on this predictive reporting that we are now in a position to provide to clients, this is really a, a, an added value services that the client will, uh, and I, I'm sure that we will continue to invest massively in that, uh, in that area. Ying Ying, where do you see the greatest impact happening? I generally agree with him, but I will further sp split it up into controllables and non-controllables, right? So yes, I like to do co cloud computing in the jurisdictions that we operate. We need regulatory approval. So I like it tomorrow, but the regulators may say that it's forever not coming, right? So that is not controllable to me. So 
within the parameters, but we will still do it, but it's just that within the parameters of the controllables, then I will really focus on the data piece because I think getting that right, like I mentioned, we can sell data as a product and I even have the optionality to re-look or redesign my uh, target operating model itself. Operating in 40 countries is, we request a lot of people, right? So we need to figure out how we can indirectly demolish borders, get to a point whereby we can enable a greater scalability uh, with uh, a lesser uh, set of people, or rather re-channel these people to a focus more on the AI activities, right? So that is the piece which I think is very important for us to sustain uh, for the next couple of years, and then improving the returns on both top line and bottom line. Perfect. And um, Richard, last word with you. I mean, you've covered the industry for many years, so out of the new technologies, which, which do you think can really have an impact? I, I'm going to ask answer that obliquely. I don't think it's going to be the headline uh, int introduction to technology to a specific problem. It'll be the consequences of solving that problem. So to give you two examples, and these are, are not necessarily frontline things. Um, the application that, that Ying said they were looking at for AI and exceptions processing. Well, if you can deal, exceptions processing is expensive. If you can solve that issue, then what does that enable the industry to, to do? How can you repurpose yep. all the money you've put into that? Another one is collateral management and mobility. If you solve that issue through, if tokenization can help you deal with that particular question, then what does that enable the industry to do after that? It's, it's that next step that I think is gonna make the big, mm. the big difference. True. Yeah, it's certainly a lot of food for thought and um, a lot for the industry to look forward to in the future. I'd like to thank my three particip participants here for joining me today and uh, yeah, thank you all for watching. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.